I'm Liza Ray. <laughs> I'm a senior program manager at Fred Hutch, and I've been working with students in science education for many years to help them get internships and make their dreams come true. I'm Marilyn Drennan. I'm a project manager at Fred Hutch who also works in science education. I've been um, working in the space for not as long as Liza, I hate to say. Um, and we're here today to talk about searching for internships with two flasks between us instead of between two flasks. Um, when should you start thinking about looking for summer internships? It's a great question. It's it is a great question. Thank you for asking. I came up with it. Thank you for asking that question, Liza <laughs> It's basically the same timeline as your college application. So most applications are going to close between December and January. Uh, you'll hear back from most in mm -hmm. February or March, and then hopefully you'll get to mm -hmm. participate in an internship that summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can tell that you're um, listening attentively mm -hmm. by your posture. I mm -hmm. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Next one. How early then should you get started on preparing your materials, Liza? At least six weeks in advance, Marilyn. At least? At least. At least six weeks? At least. So six weeks enough or more than six weeks? At least. Okay. At least six weeks? At least six weeks. At least six weeks. So greater than six weeks. <laughs> um, you need to prepare your personal statement, your short essay responses, and also ask your recommenders. You don't want to do that last minute for sure. Let's take it back a little bit. How, how do I get started? I'm interested in an internship. I want to start looking around. Yeah. How do I get started in this uh, endeavor? So we're t talking about science internships today. So mm -hmm. there are lots of other things that students might be interested in, but today we're really talking about how you get started when you're thinking about internships in life sciences. So biology, medicine, things like that. Um, things that may involve a flask. A flask. If you had to say. Because we have some flasks between us. So. <laughs> Um, what you want to do first is define your constraints and your eligibility. So, are you geographically constrained? What, what makes one geographically constrained? Like, how far can you go from your home? Can mm. you leave your home? Can you leave the state? Do you want to leave the state? Do you, you want to go explore a different state? Do you? Maybe. Do you have somebody support you if you went to this different state? Mm -hmm. If you're under 18, that might be kind of tough. Mm -hmm. Um, Unless I go to Colorado where my aunt lives and then I could stay with my aunt. You could stay with your aunt. I could stay with my aunt. Or if you, you know, wanted to apply to Fred Hutch program and you're from Colorado and your aunt lives in Seattle. Then I could live with my stay aunt. Stay with your aunt. Mm -hmm. But if you're not in Seattle or the Seattle area and you don't have a way to stay here, you might be geographically constrained from participating in our programs. All right, so <laughs> we've got geographic constraints. Funding constraints. Do you need to make money? Everybody needs to make money. Everybody? A lot of people need to make money. Most of I us. need to make money. Most of us need to make money. That's how you bought that beautiful necklace. I mean, I have to make that money, honey. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. Anytime. So you need to make money. Mm -hmm. if, if you need to make money, make sure that the programs you're looking at pay. We'll pay you. Lots of us need to make money in the mm -hmm. summer. Um, a lot of programs pay. Some don't. Sometimes there's ways to participate in programs that don't pay and also make some money in the summer. So it's just something to think about. Pretty much every program here at Fred Hutch pays our participants pays. some amount of money yep. to participate. But it's an important thing to look at. Um, you might also want to look at your citizenship status. If you're a US citizen, a permanent resident, some programs have restrictions on whether or not they can accept you based on your citizenship status. So look that up before you apply. Don't waste your time. Don't waste my time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or just your age and your grade level. Mm -hmm. That's another simple way to know if you're eligible. So um, those are some ways to get started, like starting to look for internships are, you know, who am I and how do I find internships that might match mm -hmm. like where I am physically in terms of money, physically being geographically, where I am in terms of my financial needs and my grade level and academic stage. I mean, thinking about my situation personally, say I'm an intern, I'm applying, or I'm a high school student applying for an internship, but my dad works at Fred Hutch. So that basically means I get an internship, right? Because I know someone that works there and that's all it takes. Not so fast. Whoa, back it up. <laughs> back it up. <laughs> so sometimes you might use your connections to get internships. A lot of internships have a really formal process by mm -hmm. which they evaluate candidates. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that even if you have a connection through a program, whether it's at Fred Hutch or anywhere else, one of the best things you can do is apply like everybody else. 
as a program manager, I want to see that the students that I work with are willing to put in the effort. That's sort of like the first barrier that I want to see people willing to cross to say, I'm in this to be in this, not because I just know somebody and want a free ticket. Mm -hmm. Because that says a lot about how you're going to show up as a participant once we accept you into the program. Mm -hmm. What make you stand out as an applicant? Uh, I think having an explicit interest in the program, right? You have to be able to speak yeah. to why you want to work with those faculty, why you want to work at Fred Hutch or wherever you're applying. So who knows then how you stand out? What kinds of people know that? Talk to your network, right? Like lean on your professional network, go to the website. Oftentimes program websites will tell you exactly what they want to see in an application. And if you don't see it on a program website, then maybe reach out to program staff to have an informational meeting but definitely read the website first because there's nothing more frustrating than getting an email from someone asking a question that's answered on the website. Oh, that's the worst. Mm -hmm. So the kinds of people you want to take advice from about what you should put in your application are people that kind of know what goes on behind the scenes in selecting people. So this series, for example, is a great place to go for advice. Mm -hmm. Other places you can go, like if you don't get in, can't get in touch with a program manager for the program you're applying for, which you may not be able to, they're really busy, and they don't always have time to talk to each person, each applicant individually, but there are people at your school. Mm -hmm. Just talk to one of your teachers. Um, they probably know a fair bit about this because they've been through an education process. They're really well educated in this stuff. There might also be counselors at your school mm -hmm. or other resources. So make sure that you look at like what the programs are actually looking for, not what you just heard somebody says they're looking for. Just really anecdotal stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you've heard from us, we are going to go ahead and walk you through a tour of how to use some of these resources to look for internships. Then we're going to chat with an intern, because if you don't believe us, maybe you'll believe an intern. The first and most obvious way to search for internships online is to perform a basic Google search. This can be great if you have a specific institution or program in mind, but can be overwhelming if you're searching by a general interest or by academic level. So let's take a look at some of our trainees' favorite online databases to search for an internship that is right for you. First, the Association of American Medical Colleges maintains a list of clinical and research opportunities for undergraduate students. As you can see, the programs are listed in alphabetical order by host institution. You will need to visit each institution's website for program overview, eligibility criteria, as well as application deadlines. Next is the Scientifico Latino website, which has a number of re resources aimed at helping students find research opportunities prepare applications for graduate school, as well as an opportunity to sign up for one-on-one -on -one guidance from mentors in your respective STEM discipline. While I encourage you to check out all of the helpful resources hosted on this website, let's focus on the database of internship opportunities. The Summer Research Programs database contains more than 450 programs that are offered nationwide. In the database, you can filter results by STEM field of interest, applicant citizenship status, state or location of the program, and even whether or not the program accepts high school students. Once you have filtered for programs that might be the right fit for you, you can review the programs of interest and visit their website using the link to the right of the program description. Moving on to the next resource, Pathways to Science emphasizes connecting trainees that are traditionally underrepresented in STEM with programs, funding, and mentorship resources. Their website has resources for trainees of all career stages, but we are going to take a look at the Pathways to Science funded STEM programs database. On the basic search page, you can see that there are over 1,100 programs. So in order to narrow down your search, you should specify your level of study or age group, discipline of interest, and additionally, you can filter by region or state. Alternatively, you can use the advanced search page function to narrow down your results even more.
Another resource that has research opportunities specifically for undergraduate students is the National Science Foundation, which funds a large number of research opportunities for undergrads through its Research Experiences for Undergraduates or REU program sites. When searching for an REU site, you can filter results by an area of study or interest by clicking one of the topics linked here, or you can use the text box function to enter a specific keyword to search for. Finally, the Summer Undergraduate Research Program at Fred Hutch maintains a catalog of bio biomedical research internships offered nationwide. You can open the PDF in your browser or download the catalog to your device. However, this catalog is updated on the website periodically, so you will want to check back for updates. As you can see, the table of contents is divided by career stage, so high school students, undergraduate students, as well as post bac students, graduate, and medical students. The table of contents is also linked, so it makes it easier to peruse the catalog and check out programs that may be of interest to you. Finally, when looking for an internship, it is important to stay organized. Keeping a log of programs of interest as well as details and deadlines specific to those programs will be helpful as you begin preparing materials to submit while applying. Now that we've shared some resources to get you started in your search for internship opportunities, let's hear from an intern about things to look for when applying and starting an internship. Why don't you share a little bit about your experience at Fred Hutch and your current status, what you're up to now? Yeah, so I started as the summer high school internship program uh, and back in the summer of 2019, and which feels so long ago now at this <laughs> point. Um, cause I'm still Everything feels like a long time ago after COVID. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's uh, Somebody says 2019, I'm like, oh yeah, that was last year. And nope, nope, it's, mm -hmm. it's been three years now. <laughs> Crazy, the time, passage of time isn't a new concept, but it gets me every time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm still in my lab. I kind of never really left. My PI uh, just kind of kept me around working on like small kind of computer projects that I could do working from home so I didn't have to drive down here every day, which was really nice. And then it kind of just snowballed into, hey, we have this. Hey, do you want to come back to the lab now that you've graduated? So all of that was really nice. and. Now I'm still year, here, um, my second year in undergrad. So I wanna take you back to when you were applying for the summer high school internship mm -hmm. program. Can you tell me a little bit about what that experience was like, where you looked for an internship or how you went about it or how you learned about this internship maybe? Yeah, I actually had another internship the summer before uh, we did SHIP. And Two internships in high school? Wow, yeah. pulling out all the stops. I, I, I come from a long line of workaholics, so <laughs> I was bound and determined to be doing something with my summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mentor from that first internship was actually working in the Arnold Building at the time, um, more on like clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, they have all of these really cool internship programs. Like you should really consider applying for one next summer. And I thought, you know what, let's throw my hat in the ring. This seems so cool. This would be such an amazing opportunity. And three years later, I'm still here. here. You are, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when you were looking for an internship, both your first high school and your summer high school internship uh, program experience, what aspects or features of the program were important for you? What were you looking for? I was looking for a, do I get paid? <laughs> I'm, I'm giving up my whole summer, yeah. you know, and if it's, if I, for some reason, wasn't having a good mm -hmm. experience, at least I would be, it would, I would be getting something out of it rather than just giving up however many weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so was I, was it a paid internship? Um, were there resources? And then I also wanted to make sure they had opportunities that were relevant to me. So was I getting a mentor? Um, would I have access to people that were running the program? Would I be able to really talk to people in the organization that I would be interning in? So going back to before you started the process of applying for an internship, what do you wish you would have known? I wish I would have known, A, save all of your essays that you ever write for applications because you can reuse so many and it saves you so much time. Like if you discover 
um, an application late mm -hmm. and you don't have time to write three 500 word essays or whatever the requirement is, mm -hmm. you can pull old ones and kind of tweak and make it a lot easier on yourself. Mm -hmm. So kind of throw your hat in a whole lot more rings mm -hmm. than if you, you know, got rid of all of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so anything else you wish you would have known before applying for an internship? You're not going to get everyone. You're definitely not. If you apply to five and you don't get into any, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you didn't deserve it or that you weren't good enough for it. Mm -hmm. There are just so many other factors. And a lot of times, if you're just sending in essays, you're, you're a piece of paper. So mm -hmm. try and make yourself stand out. And if you don't get it, it's, it's not the end of the world. There's other opportunities. There's other ways to get exposure. You might end up doing something way cooler with your summer or whatever other time you have on your hands. Like going on a family vacation. Exactly. Do you remember what you put in your essays for the when you were applying for the ship to help you stand out? There was an extra box that said, is there anything you feel that we should know? Mm -hmm. um, Always use that box. Always use that box. <laughs> More hot tips. I like it. Yep. Okay. Give yourself a little bit of extra sparkle on your application. Anything on your mind that we haven't talked about yet that you want to make sure people know about applying for internships or searching for internships or anything like that? I would say there's a lot of you're going to feel like you're not good enough for it. I remember we actually all had a sit down conversation, um, I think one of the first weeks of this internship, and we talked about imposter syndrome and this feeling of everyone else belongs, but I don't, I'm the one, I'm the out, I'm the imposter. And that feeling, it can hit as soon as just looking at the internships that you're trying to apply for, like I'm, I'm not good enough, I'm not these kids. But in reality, everyone feels that way and if you if you get that spot, like it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. You're there for a reason. Do the good work. If you feel like maybe you don't belong right at first, work for it. Prove that you're there for a reason.